What's up, people? Welcome back. We are going to do another Try Hack Me walkthrough. This one is called Bounty Hacker. I think it's a little bit older. There might be some walkthroughs. Yeah, this one's like more than two years old. But hey, you know, great time to revisit it. I figured I went through the walkthrough um, myself and did it myself. And now I can make a video and do it with you. Now, we have, let me share my screen first. Here we go. We have uh, the Try Hack Me page for Bounty Hacker. Uh, we have already started the machine. I kind of am waiting for that IP address to show up. And the task here says you were boasting on and on about your elite hacker skills in the bar and a few bounty hunters decided they'd take you up on your claims. Prove your status is more than just a few glasses at a bar. I sense bell pepper and beef in your future. Okay. I don't know what that part means. <laughs> um, but anyway, so this one uh, seems like they didn't give us like a ton of information, but we have our IP address here. So we can kind of just start with that. Uh, one of the first things you obviously like to do is run an Nmap scan. Uh, what is the IP address for this one? Okay. 10.10.121.215. All right. So we'll give that a minute here. Uh, we can check off. We've deployed the machine. We're looking for open ports now. And then they ask some questions here. It looks like we're going to need a user flag and a root flag. We're going to find a user's password. Uh, who wrote the task list? So we'll kind of take a look at that once our Nmap scan comes up. I'm thinking about doing a whole other video just on Nmap because Nmap can be very powerful, especially when you understand a lot of the scripts that it has available. I use Nmap for so much. Now, it looks like we have a couple ports open. We have our port 80 open for HTTP 20, uh, 2022, 2022, 22 for SSH. And we have FTP. FTP immediately piques my interest, um, which we can check that out. But let's uh, go and see what's on the website, if that's anything interesting or can give us some clues. All right. So we just have a picture here. There's no like nothing to really click on. Um, it says spike. Oh, look, you're finally up. It's been about three. It's about time. Three more minutes and we're going out the garbage. And uh, so we have looks like we have spike jet spike again and like i like to pick out these words because these names because it could be usernames uh so we have edward um ian and faye but yeah other than that it doesn't really look like this could give us much information we could try to enumerate the directories but let's go back and kind of poke at ftp a little bit because that's what i'm most interested in so let's just do FTP 10.10.121.215. Oh, I did 131. Go back. 121. Okay, there we go. Name anonymous and our login was successful. You can use anonymous. Sometimes this works actually surprisingly a lot of times in a real environment. Uh, but yeah, I always try anonymous if you don't have any login information just to see like if it'll let you log in. So anytime you see FTP, I would try that first. Now let's see what we have in here. I don't exactly know what this entering extended passive mode is. Um, I think it's just a way a, that FTP is communicating. Um, but however, I think if we wait, it will pass and give us the information. What I'm looking for is the contents of the directory. So like what files are available for us to maybe take a look at, steal, grab. Um, but it's good news that we are able to log in. Now let's just give that a minute. What I could do in this new tab is I want to make a file uh, 
Um, I'll just do login names.txt. And let's just, we have Jet, we have Spike, we have Ed, but we also have Edward. So I wanna leave both those in there. Let me see what else was on the website. Uh, da, 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 da. Spike, Jet. Mm, okay, that might be it. Oh, I think there's Ian and Faye. And yeah, fit. Okay. So I, now we have a list of names to potentially use. Um, I am curious about the SSH that we also have available, but we do need a password for that. Um, or we could try basic passwords that, you know, a lot of like just the common ones that people use. That's always a possibility. We do have password lists like Rock You and different things. But now we have that set up. Let's see if we go back here. Our FTP is still in this 222 entering extensive, extended passive mode. Let's just copy and Google this error. I guess it's not really an error, but. Uh, da, 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 da. Looks like IBM may have some documentation related to that. Okay. Uh, the server received EPSV command. Uh, the server successfully opened a data socket and is listening on the socket. The IP address associated and listening socket is the same IP address used. For the control connection. Mm. Okay, so it looks like it's asking us to create the socket and connect it to the IP address of the control connection and port number ind indicated. Because this is our port number, oh, all right, whatever. <laughs> it works. So basically it says, yeah, I was trying to connect, this would be the socket, and then um, this is the port number that they gave us in the reply, which is that right here, connection timed out, whatever. Uh, here we go. So we have two files that we, can read. Let me just save those files. And we will review them. All right, let's look at the task file first. And it says, Protect vicious plan for red eye pickup on the moon. Lynn. All right, let's go look back at what we have uh, on Try Hack Me here. Who wrote the list? That was Lynn. Uh, we could say we found the open ports on the machine, so we'll mark that completed. And then it says, what service can you brute force with the text file found? Uh, let's go look at the other text file that we got. Oh, wait. The other text file is locks.txt. Okay. These look like passwords and try hack me is asking what service can we use to brute force our way with the text file. So let's use Hydra for this. And we're just gonna use Lin, the locks as the password word list and the IP address. Let me see if this is the same IP. We need to update the IP. We're gonna give it a interval and then 21.215. We're giving it the 
that we want to do it against SSH on this particular IP address. Let's give that a shot. Oh, okay. Great. We have a login information for Lynn and the password, which was on our password list, I would assume. Uh, we got that and it was able to log in. So can, what uh, service can you brute force? We can brute force SSH. What's the user password? I copied that. Oh, never mind. I did not copy that. Let me go back and copy this. Uh, uh, copy. Submit. Now let's find our flags. All right. So what we're gonna do is SSH Lynn, but we're gonna do 121.215. Are you sure you want to connect? Yes. Password, let's grab the password that we got earlier. So we're gonna copy a selection, copy paste. Awesome, we are in. Uh, so we can see Lynn at Bounty Hacker, we're on the desktop. So let's just check out LS and cat that user file. And there we have the flag, cool. Copy that, throw that in there, submit. And now we're gonna find the root file. So let's just do CD and back out. All right, one more time. Actually two more times. Okay, we're going to change directory into the root folder here. And our permissions are denied. Okay. Let's go back into home slash Lynn. I think it's desktop. There we go. Okay, now let's find out what, if we have, you know, any root privileges on any services running. Okay, it says user Lynn may run the following commands on Bounty Hacker, which is our box. Root, bin, slash tar. Now there's a couple things you could do, like maybe potentially run, uh, I think it's WinPs or some other, you know, tool that might give you an idea of what you can kind of do with that. But what I am going to do is I'm just gonna Google this first. Uh, Okay, sweet. Now it says, uh, okay, we can spawn a shell potentially, write file. Let's use our sudo command because this is what we have found. So it says, if the binary is allowed to run as a super user by sudo, it does not drop the elevated privileges and may be used to access the file system, escalate or maintain privileged access. Let's just paste that into here. And who am I? I am root. We still see our user file but let's see if we can now go back and access that root folder. Uh, 
I guess I could have done it the other way, but this is fine. LS, okay. Change directory into root ls. Ooh, there we go. Cat root.txt. And we have a flag. Let me go put that in. And there we go. That one wasn't too bad. That was a pretty easy walkthrough. I really enjoyed it. I hope you got a couple different things out of this itself. I would love for you to let me know if you've completed this box in the comments and maybe if you found a different way to do it. I'm always curious um, how different people's walkthroughs can be. So thank you for watching this video. I'm going to do another try hack me walkthrough here shortly. So yeah, make sure to like subscribe if you're interested. I'm coming out with a new, <clears throat> excuse me, a new cyber deception series soon and um, working on some other great content for YouTube. And I also will be streaming on Twitch on Thursdays at I think 6 p.m. Eastern time, 5 p.m. Central, which is my time. So hopefully give me a follow. The links are in my bio on my begins link so check out that to follow me in the other areas but thanks everyone hopefully this was helpful and see you later